everybody get you some here now I want to tell you a little bit about the P8 Z77B Deluxe and overclocking and I want you to take note I have these two programs open for a reason this one I run all the time this one I just core CPU Z I popped open but I want you to look at the core voltage here and I want you to look at your VID now they're going to change they're going to switch between two numbers when you're uh, when you're overclocking and we'll get to that in a minute but the reason that I have these two programs open is this is how you're going to find your offset voltage these two numbers here now we'll get to offset voltage in in a minute but let me open this with uh, with something that the Windows 8 won't keep switching me back to the start screen with this I imagine okay now 1350 I updated my uh, my Intel management engine firmware now it's it, it's simple to do I mean if you go to the P uh, the P67 deluxe forms or the P8 Z77B deluxe forms you'll find my uh, my whole package everything that you need to make a DOS command stick out of a USB stick and then the instructions to, to type in two or three commands and you can flash it it's no problem I wouldn't recommend doing shit in Windows but you know they do have tools that you can do it and that's just insane for me I've been flashing firmware for years and years and I won't never do it through a Windows command too much crap can go wrong I'd much rather have more control of it myself through the DOS commands at least that way I know what's going to get typed in and what's going to get entered into the command but with Windows you know a, some, a lot of things can go wrong but that's up to you if you want to be an ass and do it the other way, go ahead and do it. It's up to you. It doesn't matter to me. It's your board. I ain't the one that's going to have to send it back if it gets bricked. But Set your uh, manual overclock to, uh, to manual. Now, I've had ASUS software clock me up to 107. And when I went back and looked at my voltages, oh my, I could not believe that the th <laughs> thank god I was water cooling because the thing is just like it was crazily high now I did not even need that high to get what they were expecting me to get to but I guess that's a good starting point for people that have no idea whatsoever I would imagine but if if you ever <laughs> if you ever know what you're doing and you run that software and it pushes you to the limit and then you go back and look and see what it what kind of voltage is going through everywhere it's insane it's just, but that's enough on it um, disable the ASUS multi-core enhancement and pop in 45 on the ratio and it should load 45 for the rest of you you don't have to do it but once now your internal PLL voltage here if you want, uh, I've been going to higher clocks, so I just left it and they will never switched it. But, you know, if you're going to stay at 45, you can uh, you can disable that and S3 will work, your sleep will work and everything fine. But I don't know, I never put, I just completely shut my computer down. That's up to you and what you want to do with it. Now, uh, your, your memory frequency, whatever you, I have. G skill tried in 2400. Um, the new G skill tried or the G skill X, whatever. I don't even remember what the heck it is. But go into your DRAM timing control and set to uh, set to whatever your fram frequency is. I th I believe mine is 10, 11, 12, 31, something like that, and your CPU power management and your digital power control. We'll get to that in a minute. Now here's what I'm talking about. I have an offset voltage of minus. Now, 
on my old P67 board, I had a plus voltage. But see, that's like I told you, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll even show you again on how to end them, how to get your offset voltage. Coming up. If I can get this thing, there it goes. All right, now. Uh, whatever your DRAM voltage is, set as such. Now, for your CPL pit at 45, 1.70, hit enter, it'll pop the rest of them zeros in for you. Disable your spectrums down here, disable your B clock recovery. Now, on your CPU ratio, hit 45. This will change, you won't be able to mess with it, and that's fine. The rest of them. Good now on your low line cow here, hit the ultra high your CPU voltage frequency manual 350. Now, if you're going to go above 45, you know you're going to have to bump that up to at least a road board 400, at least you know what I'm saying, to get above 45. So, you'll have to mess with that yourself, but uh, yeah. Above 45, I recommend at least start 400 and go up. But uh, it's Dream and T Probe on it. Now, again, if you're going to go above 45, set that to its Dream. And 140 on your uh, CPU current capacity. And the rest was left alone. Now, your CPU management configured. Uh, pop in 45 now here's your C states here now I enabled C1 on manual voltage and offset voltage and I never had an issue now people say that running manual voltage you need to run the C6 now I that's, if your chip fails while running on the C1 then enable the C6 and the C3 and disable that. Always disable the support, but you know, and and try and see what works for you. Like I said, all tips are not going to work the same. They're going to be different no matter what you do. I mean, it's silicon lottery how it is. My chip came from uh, where did it come? From? Oh my, I just had it on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember. It'll come to me in a second. But your uh, PCI graphics display is PCI Express. And if you have a Gen 3 card put in, if you have a 470, then it's a Gen 2. Just look up, do some research on your graphics card. But I can't see you running the uh, Gen 2 card on it. Z seventy seven board, but who knows? I was for a lot of GTX four seventy water cold, so I just till I got that one, and that's all good, man. Now get that out of the way. Now, like I said, to get a stable overclock. At 4.5, I would recommend going 1.265 volts and running Prime 95 for a half hour. If it passes, knock it down a half a volt and keep bumping it down by a 0.5 and a 0.5 until it fails. And then that way. At least you know what your stable voltage is. Say if it fails at 1.25, you know, then you know you need 1.26 to make it stable. And uh, then let it run for about two hours, you know, and then if it passes, you're fine. If it doesn't, then bump it up a half a volt and run it again. You know, and like I said, 
this is where you're going to get your, your offset voltage. When you're running a 100% stretch test, you need, when, it, when it's on our 100% load, you want to look at the highest voltage here and the highest voltage on your VID because they will fluctuate between two different numbers, both of them. You want to take the highest VID and you want to take the highest core voltage. Now, if your VID is higher than your core voltage, you're going to come with a minus offset. Now, if this is lower than your core voltage, then you're going to have a plus offset. That's how you get a plus and a minus offset. You take the two and put them together and whatever you come out with. Say, if, yeah, if you come out with a 2.2, say, 0 0.22. You can only go up by increments on five on on these boards. Not like the old Sandy Bridge where you could pop in any number you want pretty much by increments of two, I believe. But I tried to pop in and it didn't work for me, but you know So if it's like two point six go to zero you know point zero three zero. And uh That'll give you a little leeway. And you'll see when you're running any kind of high-intensity program like a MIGUI or any kind of media encoder that your core voltage will be 1.264. So I knew that's what made my core voltage stable was 1.26. And that little extra on the... Mine was like two two, so I went up to point three zero, and you know it didn't hurt. It still stays pretty much the same. So that's how you find your offset voltage. You take these two, and if did like I said, if this one is higher than this one, then you're gonna have a minus. If it's lower than this one, then you're gonna have a plus offset. But you need to find the stable voltage to run that overclock and then once you know that that volt that manual voltage is stable then you can take these two together and get your offset now this is get this on i hope i gave you a little insight on uh, how all this mess works and y'all have a good day now